Do you mind if I remove the mask? Thank you. My name is Judith Forkspoon. I am here to interview artist Mo and McMorrow. Do you mind if I call you artist? More of a craftsperson. We are in her home in Austin, Texas. This is a lovely home that you own. Mm -mm, I rent. You rent. Okay. Mo has created a mise en scène, and the viewer is complicit in creating the illusion of a gallery. I would almost call this genius, except for the fact that it is not faking it. It has become a cultural phenomenon. I'm not good enough to be able to fake it. <laughs> not even good enough to be fake. I don't understand what that means. In order to fake it, you have to be extremely skilled. And I'm only moderately skilled, so I have to just be... I would hate to use the pejorative term kitsch, but there is um, a sentimentality, uh, a harking back, pleasing to the eye. What is the underlying theme? There isn't a cohesive theme. <coughs> Let me ask you some tough questions. Do you like sparkles? The, the accessibility to it. Yeah, my work is accessible to children, dogs even. Really? Let me tell you a story. I did a portrait of a dog. It's Ryan Bing. We should not name dog. Apparently what happened was they showed the painting to the dog. And the dog went, looked at it and started barking. Oh. So my work, yeah, is, is accessible to humans and animals. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is that, that's my claim to fame. Oh, I see. What is your favorite color? Favorite color? Oh, I don't have a favorite color. What about Prussian blue? Yeah, I like Prussian Where blue. Where do you find yourself on that seesaw? Anywhere along maybe this end, that end. Um, I heard there's a story. I was living in Sydney and I went to this art opening. Uh, I remember walking in, got myself a glass of wine and looked around. There's lots of people there, but I still couldn't see the art. <laughs> and so I went over to a friend, you know, and I was saying, you know, give me the lowdown. What's going on? Where, where's the art? Because she's going to come over to me any minute <laughs> and I want to say something. We were both looking around, we saw it. It was the electrical wire that went up the wall and along one of the beams. And it was painted <laughs> lime green. And that's, that was it. That was all that was in the gallery. Anyway, she came over and I just said, hi. <laughs> I understood that it was redefining the space, but I didn't know that the space needed redefining. <laughs> In the context of the art world, you don't come up to snuff. I'm not sure if it matters. But I don't want to have an argument with you. I want you to understand where you fit in the grand scheme of things. Sorry, where is this going? What is this idea that you talk about in repurposing? Well, I take work that I made in one context and I repurpose it, I change it so it becomes a new artwork. Is it just a way of cheating? No, it's not really like cheating. It, it's, it's same with hanging on a nail in there. Um, it was a, a painting that I, I cut it up into little squares, sent them around the world and then um, people, kids, Adults, dogs. no, no dogs, um, sent back their work and I replaced it and it became a different work of art. And then again, I dismantled that and made them into six smaller works now made out of that. So it's been repurposed yet again, stealing from myself. A little bit of self-appropriation. Why not pleasure yourself in that way a little bit? Rephrase that? It's not what I mean. You and I both know that. Did you vote? I can't vote. I'm not a citizen. 
You're not even. So I'm Canadian. It's like American, but without the confidence. Oh. <laughs> It's like a decaffeinated American. <laughs> I think I might not have any more questions left. What would you like to be when you grow up?